Welcome to this Oracle Technology Network TechCast. I'm Justin Kestelin from OTN. Thanks for joining us. Once again, as you can see, we've invaded the, the Oracle corporate set at Oracle HQ. Our topic today is going to be a Linux engineering update. Um, and uh, the update uh, we're going to get is from th uh, the man most qualified to discuss it with us, Wim Kokertz, who is the uh, VP of Linux Engineering here at Oracle. Wim, thanks, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Um, we don't have a lot of time today, so um, uh, I want to start with um, something that's um, a little more time sensitive, uh, which would be the Linux Foundation meeting that occurred uh, in San Francisco, sure. I think in the last couple weeks. Yeah, it was, I think, two weeks ago. So the Linux Foundation itself, so Oracle is a board member of the Linux Foundation. We, we, uh, we support the organization on an annual basis, and so I, I'm the representative for Oracle on the, on the Linux Foundation board. So the Linux Foundation uh, employs Linus Torvalds himself, and so we have, you know, every quarter, I think we have a board meeting where we discuss sort of the state of, of, of Linux and, and whether there's anything that the Linux Foundation can do to sort of help bring all the different companies together, including the community as well. And I think that so far, the Linux Foundation has done a really good job at being totally neutral. Right? They, they tried to bridge the gap between the, the, the enterprises and the Linux users and also developers without sort of trying to promote one side or the other. So they've been very good at that. I think Jim Zemlin has done a, an excellent job. And so one of the things that the Linux Foundation does is they hold these Linux user summits, uh, the Linux Foundation Summit. And it's an invite-only event. And, and even though that the economy has been relatively difficult with, with travel budgets, they actually had a, a huge turnout. So they had over 400 people, um, I believe. They were literally sold out, so to speak, the, the venue. And so, you know, t users come there, folks from companies go there, the, many of the Linux kernel developers go there, and they basically have discussions and talk for a few days. And I think it's very valuable for, for Linux in general because, um, you know, traditionally there's always been a little bit of uh, difficulty between getting the two sides to talk. And, and so I think they've, they've done a very good job at, at making sure that companies have, have feedback, but at the same time that um, they're not there to demand things. I think that that's gone away. So within the Linux community at large, I think it's no longer a, you know, we demand the following to happen. It's, look, this is what we're facing as an organization deploying Linux, and the other side is sort of trying to understand how um, Linux should get better, right? And, and so there's plenty of stuff to do in the debugging space and tracing. Um, there was a file system summit, which, um, um, Chris Mason from my group was there, and um, Zach Brown. So we're, they were talking about ButterFS and and some other things. So it's very good. So yeah. we've officially moved away from the benevolent dictatorship and into a much more collaborative environment. I think so. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. <laughs> it's been it's been very good. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Linux kernel development at Oracle. I read recently that Oracle is actually now the second biggest employer of Linux kernel developers. Yeah, I. And why? Why is that? Large, right? I, yeah. I don't know the exact numbers of, yeah. of uh, you know Red Hat versus Novell versus IBM. It's not a competition to have the right. most number of people. I think what you know what's important to to us is that that we make sure Linux gets better. You know, in in the space that Oracle lives in, in particular, right? I mean, to be very honest, we we don't care too much about improving the desktop from our end. The Oracle. F development focuses very much on on making sure that enterprise deployments are good and we focus on those features not to say that the others are not important it's just that from from our point of view of course, we, yeah. we want the enterprise to be to be rock solid and and so you know the folks in my group work on mainline features I, I think we you know mentioned that before in, in when we talk to to journalists and to customers that that our feature development is always focused on what Linus maintains. And the reason we do it that way is because one, you know, we don't do product differentiation. We don't compete on my Linux versus your Linux. We want there to be a generic Linux that has all the features that are supposed to be there. And so this way we do it the right way. It, it makes the community feel more comfortable with what we do. And um, it, it, it helps us longer term because Red Hat picks this up, Novell picks this up, and, and so everyone benefits from it ultimately. So, so yeah, the guys, you know, do generic kernel development. Yeah. Right. So let's turn uh, more specifically to Oracle and Breakable Linux. I think actually um, OTN has been at a couple of the recent Linux shows in the last couple months, uh, the Scale Conference for being one, uh, Linux Fest. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually still an amazing amount of, I think, unawareness, number one, and number two, still a little bit of misunderstanding about what Oracle and Breakable Linux is. Yes. So let's speak together. Oracle and Breakable Linux is about support, 
correct? It's, right. it's not a distro, it's not a fork. Mm -hmm. Can you ex expand on that? Yeah, you're right. So, so there's a few things. I think that the, the Unbreakable Linux support program, which is the right uh, thing, is, is, is very much known within the Oracle world. So the Oracle DBAs and, and uh, many of our Oracle customers are very much aware of this and the value and the value being full stack support. They have to call one vendor, they get the support top to bottom. The, the Linux support folks know the Oracle products and, and the other way around, so there's no ping pong. Um, it, it just makes it a lot easier for our customers to be in a solid single point of contact stack. And so, you know, one thing is when you go to scale and some of these other conferences that are system administrator level in, in general, they, they're not so much aware of Oracle because they live in the OS world and so we have, so far had less visibility there and we're trying to figure out how to address that market, right? Because we do generic Linux OS support. Um, but within the Oracle space, I think it's been very good. Um, and yeah, so, so there's two parts which does confuse people uh, very often. Is So one is it's Oracle Unbreakable Linux, which you, you get as a customer, right? And it's a support subscription um, where we basically just provide Linux OS support. And then the second part to that is you can get that support on two, in two combinations. One is you're a Red Hat Enterprise Linux user today and you want to s switch support or in some cases even customers pay both sides for support, uh, which is uh, an interesting solution, but it, it, it works for us. Um, so, so they have Red Hat Enterprise Linux installed. They don't have to reinstall. They get the support from us, the updates from us. And then at the same time, we, we have to offer a Linux distribution to those customers that are moving to Linux that have, you know, go from another platform and they need the, the binaries. And uh, since the binaries are not freely downloadable, you have to get a subscription first. We, we offer Oracle, Oracle Enterprise Linux, sorry, as a Linux OS distribution. And you know, to not go into too much detail, but you know, Oracle Enterprise Linux is an exact replica of Red Hat Enterprise Linux in terms of distribution, in terms of patch updates, the timelines for patches and everything. So it's literally an, a, an identical mirror of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And so the customer has the choice. They stay on RHEL, they, they deploy OEL, but they pay for support and they get the support from us. So really the whole point of Oracle Enterprise Linux specifically is that it gives customers the ability to have access to the Linux binaries for free. That's the whole yes. reason it exists. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're running out of time here, but I'm going to ask Wim to stay on for a, a second uh, part of our uh, webcast today in which we're going to focus on Oracle VM. Um, if you're interested in more information about Oracle Unbreakable Linux, about uh, Linux uh, kernel development in general at Oracle, or just Linux period, if you're a sysadmin, for example, um, you're interested in learning about um, uh, strategies for managing your Linux environments, uh, the best opportunity for you to do that is on OTN at the Linux Technology Center, which you can reach at otn.oracle.com slash Linux. Once again, I'm Justin Kestelin from Oracle Technology Network, and we will be talking to you again soon.